I'm delighted to be here to celebrate this milestone with Sister Angie. And um, very wonderful to hear a church return love and gratitude to the people that have been leading them. It's a family moment. And the Lord requires those moments because church is a family proposition. It's a multi-generational, multicultural group of people that the Lord has assigned to his shepherd. And so it makes sense that there are moments when we just simply stop and reflect. We look back and we reconcile all that has happened into one precious moment and then we can look forward but we have to look back in order to do that and so i i noticed the remarks among the remarks many of you did look back and sister landon i believe was our first speaker and talked about sister angie's roles in her lifetime she saw her as a student and a cheerleader and um and a debutante, clearly, in the gold and black ensemble, yes. And so, uh, and many of you, I'm assuming, have seen her assume and practice the roles of her position as leader in this congregation. But she is <clears throat> more defined by the one the Lord assigned to her as his and she is a worshiper. And so all of the other roles she is assigned are subsumed in that one, which defines all others. The strength of everything you have seen has been a product of her connection to the God who made her, who designed her. So before we can go any further, we have to thank him for the beauty of his creation. Would you just lift your hands with me? And so, in the spirit of the moment, I thought I would just sing a few songs and we'll see how far we get. I know that you're supposed to be out of here at noon, and I don't violate family traditions. Okay, Nate, can you give me a few strings on this? So I'm just going to dedicate this to you. And because I'm older than she is and older than Brother Wright, I'm just going to I'm just going to do this thing. He's already said we're coming back next month. There's not much he can do. I see trees of green. Red roses too I see them bloom For me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, and the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful Colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people I pass by I see friends shaking hands Saying, how do you do? They're really saying I love you 
I hear babies cry. Got two little granddaughters all my own. They're gonna learn much more than their Jana has ever known. But I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Now I'm gonna ask you to sing with me on this next little course and we'll just anoint her with love. You only do this every 50 years. Because most people can't stand it. They just don't have a place to receive that kind of love. It's just too overwhelming. But you're gonna sing it with me, okay? And you might wanna hold someone's hand. Obviously, let that be somebody that you're connected to biologically. <laughs> or maritally. I felt the need to say that. What does this mean? I think maybe, um, I don't, where's Esther? And I think maybe you girls better just scoot over and go sit by your mama right now. Timothy, slide on over there. Wait, Nate, no, Timothy, you don't go anywhere. Put your arm around your mama. And you can all sing it and we'll just, this is a family moment. Are you live streaming this? If you're watching this, I make no apologies. There are moments when families need to acknowledge it's tough, it's hard, but it's better than waiting until someone's gone. Are you ready? I want you to sing with me. That means you, Brother Wright. Maybe you should go down there. Okay. Now he is petrified. You didn't do tootie ta, but you will do this. <laughs> Here we go. You are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful. You can say that to your own kids and your husband and your wife. To me and your pastor's wife. Can't you see? You're everything. She is. You are. You're everything I hope for. Now stand to your feet and let's sing it to our maker, to me. Let's lift our hands and sing to him. You are so beautiful to me. Thank the Lord right now.
Thank you, Pastor Wright, for indulging my whimsy. I think this will be memorable for all of us. <clears throat> it's always precious to be invited to celebrate a family's moments, and especially this family, whom we have known since the children were very, very small. And I haven't been in their lives as they became young adults, so it's especially poignant to me while I've been living my life as an adult, they've been growing to adulthood, and here they are now. And it's been amazing. <clears throat> I was 14 when your pastor's wife was born. I was living in California, so I had no knowledge of her. But as God designs everything to be beautiful in its time, so he allowed our paths to cross. And it's been wonderful to celebrate moments with them. Some have been difficult, as your pastor alluded to. So it's especially wonderful to be here in a moment when things have reached resolution and they've battled their way through some moments, as the, has this congregation. I don't think there's a congregation in the United States or the world that cannot say they have fought their way to this present moment. Looking back over the last 15 years that were 2020, When everything was redefined, when everyone had to isolate willingly or unwillingly and then find out how strong you were or weren't as you battled through loss, everybody lost something. Time, <clears throat> friends, health, there was loss. And I think it is especially a moment of poignancy to see how many of you battled your way through your losses to be here today. I celebrate you. It's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful to see you. Wonderful to be with you. <clears throat> so as we stand here celebrating this jubilee with friends and family near and far, this milestone moment was recorded in the Word of God. In fact, he commanded Israel to celebrate a jubilee every 50 years. So generally, that only happened once in your lifetime. It was that special. I know that there were <clears throat> Sabbaths every seven years. The land was supposed to get a rest. You're just supposed to give everything a rest. That's called winter where I'm from, and I shared with your pastor and wife, we are inland Seattle. We have no coastline, but it's gray more than six months a year in Ohio. This is a well-kept secret. This is why people are so rabid about the Ohio State University and the Bucks, because they don't have anything else to do. I'm sorry. That and classic cars. If you hear bitterness in my voice, I came from the Mid-South where the sun shines all the time, whether it's rainy. Well, actually, it does shine sometimes in the rain. And even after tornadoes, we see the sun. In Ohio, we don't have tornadoes, but we don't have the sun either. I don't know why I'm on this, but I was grateful to see Christmas lights when I got here. That's all I can say about that. And Timothy did me the honors of plugging them all in when I left so I could see your lights. Don't take them down. <laughs> Not till after the marriage conference, thank you. We need a little Christmas around here. If I'd have thought of that song, I'd have probably sung it. So, I have to acknowledge the fact that the Wrights family is growing. Jalen and Jacob, the two J's, have joined the clan. It's starting to sound like a ranch did notice the markings that were on the back of the seat in your dad's car, the initials of Chester Nathaniel Wright and Timothy Jude. Yes, well done, boys. Scotch tape. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> so now I challenge Jalen and Jacob. You're going to have to find a place to Scotch tape your initials in that car. It's on. Okay, evidently they tried and someone removed the evidence. <laughs> so how did I get here? This is what your pastor's wife was asking last night 
when I walked in the door and she rounded the corner. <laughs> Not a word escaped her lips. She just stood there. And I kind of moved forward and she just stood there. Uh, I kind of think I don't know, the Lord needs to paint very literal pictures for me, but I'm kind of thinking this might have been what the disciples did when Jesus showed up. It was kind of like, what are you doing here? I'm like, you know, I never thought I'd be that thick, but clearly, and I love you, but it was, she was just like, she walked up to me, she, she regained her composure, and then she started touching my face. <laughs> Are you real? Are you here? Are you in my house? So I told the kids that whatever they do will have to surpass that moment, and you'll know that's the moment against which all future moments are measured. I think maybe the announcement of a baby might do that. That might, <laughs> it might, it might, it just, that I have to know. I have to know the minute you tell, whichever one of you is first. I got to know, did she surpass that moment? What a wonderful way to catch someone off guard. And I have never been the source of that much joy in my whole life that I know of, except maybe when I was gone to Europe and my two-year-old child hadn't seen me for 10 days. And she met me with tears. She looked at me, she burst into tears, and then I couldn't hold her for a full hour. She just couldn't handle it. So anyway, I am here in the flesh. So Jubilee demanded looking back because it was characterized by three specific things and a fourth. And I'm just going to talk about that. First of all, <clears throat> you were to set at liberty anybody in Israel that had been taken captive. Second, you were to return everybody's inheritance to them. And that inheritance, as we know, was Joshua's responsibility by lots based on the size of tribes, the land was divided, and every tribe got a portion of the promise. And the portion was designed by God, and so God gave them their lot. Say, God gave them their lot. Gave them their lot. So nobody tried to escape their lot. Nobody tried to go, but I want to be in this tribe. It was just like, this is, this is my inheritance. I got to hang on to it. And so Jubilee, every 50 years, there was a reset button that addressed losses and sorrows and life every 50 years. Personal liberty, return of inheritance, which also leads to the third element, remission of debts. Whatever you owed. After that 50, at that 50 year period, done. You don't owe it anymore, it's a reset. You're not declaring bankruptcy, you, it's just a reset. It's gone, you're not declaring anything. The oppression of the debt is over. And then the fourth thing, the land was to lie fallow. You were to give the land a break. All that production, all that working, all that laboring, all that sowing, all that watering, all that effort, all that gardening, all that stuff, stop. And you would have to rely on God for three years because you were supposed to eat what the land provided. And that was it. Whatever was out there is what you lived on. That was a reset a reminder of man doesn't live by bread alone. We rely on God, not the strength of our hands. Wow. Every 50 years. And typically, you would have only celebrated that once in a lifetime. 
This is amazing to me. I've been mulling it over ever since I knew I was coming here because I, it's very complicated. <laughs> Jubilee, the discussion of it in Leviticus is very detailed and very complex, but the, but the bottom line is that it was a reset button. And I guess 50, that 50 mark, and you know, I, I talked here about the circles of life. Some of you may remember that. Zero to 10. 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, and 61 to 70, seven circles of 10 years each. And the Bible said there are appointed unto us three score and 10. And if by reason of strength you reach beyond that, Psalms 90 describes what you have to look forward to, what we have to look forward to. Some of us have already passed that seventh circle. And so how do you, how do you come to a moment of jubilee? And we think we use the word jubilee, jubilation. And do you know what I discovered? That the word jubilee itself means a ram's horn. So it is associated with a shout. It's associated with joy, a proclamation, because the implication is everything you haven't been able to figure out. That, that, all of it, all of it. And you say, well, why do we even have to deal with it? Why do I want to remember it? Why do I want to? Because it's like the loose ends of the tallit, and you know what that is, the prayer shawl. And every one of those loose ends was supposed to represent, what, 663 ordinances. And I've often wondered, what do I do with the loose ends of my life? And, of course, we all have a story, and we have ours. And COVID wasn't kind to us, but the year before wasn't, and the years following haven't been. I have watched God allow some traumatizing things to happen in my presence before my face, and I'm, I'm just gasping, trying to understand. We need a jubilee. We need a jubilee. And when they celebrated this jubilee, they would announce it on the Day of Atonement. They'd blow that ram's horn. This is jubilee. So at the same time, it was extremely sobering because that's a day when you afflict your soul and you have to stop and think. And I'm reminded of the scripture in Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which hath been is now. This is a biblical way of saying history repeats itself. And that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. So that when you come to a jubilee, it's not just a party. It's not just a party down and yay, let's celebrate. It is a deliberate Command to stop and look back. A lot of us are horrified at the thought of looking back. I'm looking for the face of the sister who spoke and said he brought me out of miry clay. I could see her with her siblings jumping in that clay until they realized that their feet were held. And we're made of clay, and so there's something poignant about it being stuck in yourself. just stuck, not because you want to be, but to the people of God, there was a promise. God knew there were going to be seasons of feast and famine. He knew there were going to be hardships. He even knew there was going to be poverty among his people, but he said, there is a moment when the trumpet is going to announce, it's done. You're finished. It's going to happen to you. What's going to happen is I'm going to set you free. You're going to get everything that was yours and you lost. Everything you owed canceled. I'm going to tell you the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house. And I believe that was a jubilee. And
And if you received it, that was the first sound of the trumpet to you. That God was declaring your liberty. God was declaring your freedom. God was declaring your inheritance. God was removing your debts. Mercy did what nobody else could do. Jubilee. And then we battle to enter that last part, rest. Rest where you stop working it. We all come into this body of Jesus Christ, this temple with the Egyptian notion that you get up in the morning and you work hard. And if you're going to get ahead, you work harder. The problem is that some people's lot in life has put them at a disadvantage from the model that works in Egypt. And some people are saying, if I could just change my lot. I don't have Sister Angie's testimony. What I'm trying to tell you, whatever God gave you, whatever promises he made, whatever you came from, that Bible is just as much your promised land as it is hers. You don't have to be born in a family that taught you. You've been born in the family of God. You have an inheritance with the people of God. You are the righteous redeemed, saved by grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. I'm proclaiming jubilee. Say, well, do you feel like you've been in jubilee? No, I actually don't. I'm not Catholic, but I believe I have discovered purgatory. Selah. I'm not where I was, but I'm not where I want to be, and I just feel judged all the time. <laughs> is that purgatory? I think it is, isn't it? <sighs> but there is a moment of jubilee. So while I'm saying this for all of us, I'm, I'm wondering when you hit that 50th, and you look back, and what do you see? Your children are grown now, and they've brought two people home. And the other two are probably next. I'm not sure which order, <laughs> but I suspect it won't be long. And then we'll begin another phase of your life where you begin raising their children. Yes. Yes, once you start, it never stops. <laughs> You're never without children once you have yours, <laughs> because then you have theirs. Yes. But there's something powerful about the promise of personal liberty, and I want to dwell on a couple of these, if I may, for just a little while. You know what the Declaration of Liberty implies? That somehow you got captive to something. Is that possible to be in Israel and because of hard times, because of circumstances? I don't know. And here's what's so sad. In that 50-year period from the last Jubilee, moms and dads could make bad decisions and their kids could wind up with, I got sold. I mean, it's just, you say, does it happen in Israel? Are you kidding me? Things happen. I'm looking at families in this church to whom things have happened. Maybe through no fault of your own. But you're the product of somebody else's circumstance and you may feel trapped. Implied captivity is what personal liberty suggests. That somehow... It doesn't say, it just said if your brother got in poverty and, and, and because he was trying to figure out a way to live, he sold off his children. It's in Israel, yes. Now, 
we talk about human trafficking here, and it's, 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 it, that evokes images that I'm not talking about. I'm talking about people that could not feed their own kids. People who had to make a decision to entrust the lives of their children to somebody else because they didn't have what it took. And there are a lot of times that families come to church and they are grief-stricken by what they did or didn't do in the lives of their children. And they are held captive to their own personal losses. See, it's a, I don't want to talk about it. I want, God requires what's past. If we're going to move forward, we got to reconcile it. And this year of Jubilee, it's like, I don't know how to fix that. But the Lord said, I'm going to fix it. I am going to set you free. I'm going to liberate you from the three things that hold people back. I am captive to the memory. I am captive to the moment. I am captive to the circumstance. It happened. I have the scars. It happened. Jesus was captive to the moment. Jesus was held captive by the nail. Jesus was held captive and suffered until he died. But on the third day, because he wanted you to know you could be free from your past, he got up. And I don't care. I'm not just talking about being free from sin. I'm talking about what you've suffered since you became a child of God. He says there is a liberty <laughs> wherewith Christ will make you free. I'm not talking about the first time you spoke in tongues. I'm talking about what you've been dragging around with you for years. <laughs> Pain and suffering. I came to proclaim liberty. I think it's Psalm 61, 61 and 1 is what Jesus quoted when he went there. That's not it, not Psalms. Isaiah is what I'm saying. Isaiah 61 and 1, when he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me not to take you to your past, to cast you down, to bring up the same thing over and over and over again, to preach good tidings to the meek. You can't heal yourself, but there is a healer in the house. You can't deliver yourself, but there is a deliverer in the house. Hallelujah. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. I'm proclaiming healing this morning to your broken heart. To proclaim liberty to captives. Liberty to captives. Sister Angie, what I want for you in this church is to set you free from whatever's held you captive in the last 50 years and set you free to go forward in your mind, in your thoughts. In your body till Jesus comes. Lift your hands right now. Hallelujah, Mohosiah. Liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The return of inheritance. Most people think they can get richer if they can change their lot in life instead of embracing it and letting God make it productive. I think I'm going to say that again. Most people think that if they could just change their lot... The circumstances, birth, the, the framework, they could be richer if, they, if I just had what you had. It just creates a longing, such a longing, such a deep-seated longing because I, can't, I will never have it. I can't undo what's been done. But what you don't know is God already gave you a lot. You have a lot in life. It may be 20 by 20. It may be 10 acres, 15 acres. I've lived for six, 64 acres. 
and it's all been filled by Lot. There aren't too many choices I've been able to make in the Lot that I have. Do you understand? My life is consistent of just putting one foot in front of the other, and that's how I wound up here today. But God gave me a lot. God knows when we feel loss. You see, the loss of inheritance implies I lost what was supposed to be mine. A lot of people are filled with longing because they know they're missing something they thought was theirs. They're missing it. And the only way they have of knowing it is they covet what someone else has. And that goes against the word of God. You're not supposed to covet. So evidently what somebody else has is not supposed to be a driver to get you to where you need to be. I've been saying, Lord, you put me here. Now, what is it you're trying to teach me? This is my lot. This is my lot in life. I can't change it. It's my lot. It looks like a mess. Some of you turn around and look at your life and go, there's not much. There's not a lot here. And he says, yes, there is. It's what I've given you. I don't know how to cultivate it, but I do. I don't know how to make it productive, but I do. I gave you the lot. I want you to participate with me. I want to show you what your lot is and how it becomes productive under my hand. I want to return to you what's been taken from you. You didn't even know it was yours. And you spent hours and years of your lot chasing clouds and rainbows when there's real stuff there. He said, this year of Jubilee, I'm going to give it back to you. What the canker worm took and what your own ideals told and what comparison took. I want you to accept your lot. Once in 50 years, they got to do this. You have an inheritance. Say with me, I have an inheritance. I feel a lot of times like we are Aladdin with an old lamp that was given to us, and here comes somebody flashy. Old lamps for new. Old lamps for new. Just give me your old stuff. I'll give you the new, improved version. See, you don't even know sometimes what you've lost. My guess is there were children and families, you know, because everybody died, right, 40 years and older in the wilderness. So when Joshua handed out everything, these were to kids who were, were young, 40 years and younger. They weren't there when Moses said they were babies and uh, they didn't have that heritage of they heard stories. But, but I'm going to tell you something, young people, there is an inheritance thing here. And uh, you say, well, I want to play the drums and I, we want to talk about your lot in life. And, and some of you are just coming coming in and you're going, I don't even know what's going on here. And you don't understand that there was an inheritance for you. And you need somebody to teach you about what it was you got when you walked into the family and were born again. Because you can lose what you don't know you have. Oh, I feel like we just need to praise the Lord right now. God, Jubilee. Jubilee, Jubilee to Antioch. My God, Jubilee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right here. It's 1130. I'm going to give us some time in the altar. I want you to just bow your heads for a minute. Lift your hands. Whatever you feel comfortable. God, I have come for such a time as this. And Sister Angie looks back over her life. And this church individually looks back over theirs. I am asking you for a jubilee moment. For not just her and her family, but every family in this church. When all this captivity, things we've 
we've suffered and been through. God, that we can release, be released and release people we have held captive through unforgiveness and bitterness. I want to let it go. I want to let it go. This is my jubilee. I don't want to look back again and see that coming after me. God, in your name, I want my inheritance. I want what's mine. It may be a garnet. It may be a diamond. What I have may not mean anything to anybody else, but you gave it to me by lot. Shuttle. I feel like in this church there are some keepsakes. I want you to press your way through right now. I'm not playing any pretty music. I want you to think about what I said. When she said garnet, January is garnet. I thought to myself, I wonder how many little pins or brooches some little millennial might walk in their grandma's closet and find and say, that's just an old pin, never knowing the value of the stones that somebody bought 50 years ago or 150. There are some things here that belong to you by inheritance. Oh, up. put your hand on your heart right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to address first. I'm going to address sorrow and loss. If we're looking back, if we're looking back, if you're going to turn around, then you better know this scripture because you'll die if you look back. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. When you turn around, and you look, do you see goodness yet? I'll show you. I'm, I'm talking to you. Go ahead. I want you to pray while I'm talking. What do you see coming after you? Regret. You got to let the Lord convert that in this jubilee moment. God, I'm going to have to turn around. And I'm going to have to say regret has stolen from me. I've lost so much to regret. What did regret take from me? Time, attention, details. You can't fully be engaged if you're sitting in a party and all you can think about is your own suffering. You're being robbed. If you're sitting and all you can think about is where you've been and you can't celebrate this moment because you are grief-stricken at your own. I'm creating a moment, Antioch. Hayolo Oshata. It would be so wonderful if everyone could identify with their own lot. Do you know what this identity crisis is in the world? We've lost everything. We don't even know who we are anymore. That's not you. Because Sheol. If you're watching online at home, I'm speaking to you. Come with us. Here is the way out when you look back. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands Do you know that? From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I'm looking for goodness I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Look back with me. Look back and see it. All my days, you were close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness 
of God. That's what I see. Looking back, that's what I see. I see it. All my life you have been faithful. Yep, there have been some hard times, but you still come out on top. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Of God. I'm just going to give you a moment to think so you can participate in this celebration of goodness and mercy. Now you say, I can't because of that is the one thing right there that the Lord wants to set you free from right there. That thing that keeps you from going, oh yes, but my sorrow is greater than the goodness. Nope, nope, nope. It's time right now for the goodness to swallow that up. How, how can I? I, I, I but you don't know. No, nope, but the scripture doesn't. It said, and we know that all things, ha <laughs> ha, loose ends, all loose ends work together for good to them that love God. I know you love God or you wouldn't be here right now. You didn't have to get up this morning. You didn't have to come here. You say, I'm not like you people. God knows who you are. Quit judging yourself so harshly. You came, didn't you? That's enough for me. That's enough for God. You came. You're here. Come on, let the goodness swallow up the loose ends. Say, it's not goodness I need. It's mercy. You don't know what I've done. Nope, I don't, but I know who does. Who is he that it condemneth? It is Christ that justifies. Hanging next to a thief who actually admitted, yep, I did it. I did it. And Jesus said, you'll be with me today. Oh, I want you to sing with me. I love your voice. Sing it. You have led me through the fire. Praise team, come on up. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I have known you. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Sing. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, yeah. All my life you have been faith. All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made I will sing sing of the goodness of God sing with me your goodness come on your goodness is running after it's running after me it's been chasing me down your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life, with my life. 